Hi, thanks for checking out another video on Ideas Box. I'm Jimmy, and today's video is of how I set a pressure switch for a water pump in the workshop before I fit it to a system. I find it's much easier and cleaner. I also adjust my workshop compressor and show one thing to check on a pressure switch if you're having trouble setting one that's been in place for a while. Anywho, let's get into it. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how I set one of these pressure switches because this is just a, um, a pressure switch that I've put an air fitting in and I'll show you why I've done that in a minute. So I want this pressure switch to operate this pump. I want the pump to come on at about 25 to 30 psi. That's not super important, but I want it to go off at 60. I don't really want more than 60 psi in this system. So what I'll do is I'll just this is how you adjust. This is the one you muck around with most. This is the one that sets the pressure. This is the one that sets the absolute upper pressure that it'll switch off at, which is, I like to use that one to set it at uh, 60. So I'm gonna set, set it so that the pump comes on at about 25 to 30 and go off at about 60. So let's do that now. The first thing you do is, I don't want this pump to get more than 60 PSI and there's 100 in here at the moment. So I'm just gonna bleed that pressure off. So I'm just dumping all that pressure in, in this air hose here now. I'll get that down to about, about 30. So that's now on about 30 PSI. Okay, so now I connect this. So the contacts are closed, which means the pump is running because it's at less than uh, 60 PSI. So you wind this and the positive there, wind that up. Right, so that's come on at about 55. So I want to wind this one up. Just let me, just let me double check the pressure it goes off at. Hang on. Just let me check the pressure that the pump comes on at. Yep, that's near enough 30, pretty close, about the thickness of the needle. And it's going, the pump is going off at 55. So I've got this one right. I've got this adjustment here right. I just need to wind this one down a little bit. But what I'll do is, because you want a little bit more pressure on that spring, what I'll do is I'll wind it up a fair way. I don't know how many flats that is. I should probably should have been counting, but never mind. So I'll just get that to turn off again. To turn on again, sorry. Right, now I want that pump to turn off at 60. So you wind that up till it gets to... All right, I've gone the wrong way. So I need to wind that down. So I wind this one all the way down, not all the way down, sorry. I wind this one down fairway. That's two turns, three turns, four turns. Now I'm pretty sure that'll be well above 60. So I'll bleed the pressure off till the pump comes back on. Watch the contacts close at 30 PSI. Right, now I want the pump to go, to go off at 60. Right, so I need to go a little bit more. I'll just run through that again. It's a little bit time consuming, but it'll get you there. So pump on at 30. Right, oh, look at that, spot on 60, that was lucky. What I had thought I was gonna do is, in fact, I'll show you. Give that another couple of turns. I'll show you what I wanted to do. 
but I, I managed to get lucky and get that 60 psi first go. Let me show you what the pump will come on at 30 and I want it to go off at 60 so what you do is you wind the pressure up to 60 about there and then you just back this one off very slowly until the contacts open. Oh, there we go. So now the contacts open at 60 and shut the pump off and they will come on. We'll go through the rigmarole again. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's better than trying to do it with a water pressure with a pump running on and off. I'll just shut the compressor off so it doesn't start up. So there's 30 and there's the pump on. Contacts are closed. Exactly 60 and the contacts are open. So there's the pump off at 60, on at 30, off at 60. So that's how I set these switches. I just find that it's a bit easier here in a clean workshop than in a grubby shed full of spider webs and possibly snakes and water leaks and you know, it might be dark. It's just a pain in the neck. So that pump switch is now near as shit as to swearing to being set exactly right for the job I want. So that's how I set these. You just need an air fitting, a compressor, and just vary the outlet. So I'll wind that back. Well, actually, I'll take this off first. So there's my, there's my switch off. I'll wind that back up now to usable pressure. Okay, it'll only go to 90 because the compressor's on. Just let me bleed some air out of it with my... Okay, so I don't know why it's gone that far up, but let's have a look at that while we're here, shall we? I think it's just a screw in that hole there. I'm not happy with that being up at 120 PSI. Pretty sure there's just a screw in here, there we go. Right, so I think I just adjust that one there. So let's just bleed some air out. That's better. That's exactly 100 PSI. That's all you want in that little tank. You don't want 120. That wasn't good at all. So, yeah, don't touch any of that. That's, that's live with power. But it is perfectly safe to put that screw in there and to adjust that screw in the top there, as you just saw. So, yeah, I don't know why that was doing that. But um, anyway, it's fixed now. By backing that screw off, I've taken the tension off that little spring there, so it's allowed the compressor to cut off a bit sooner. So I think 100 PSI is plenty for what I do around here. I certainly don't need 120, I don't know why it was doing that. But, oh well, it's all fixed now. I'll put this cover back on. There we go like I bought one. Earlier on I said that sometimes um, the only problem you really have with these is that uh, there's a little hole in there that blocks up. Now this one's actually quite large. It looks like it's about maybe five millimeters or so, but I have seen some that are much smaller. They're like a two or three millimeter hole, which is good because it acts as what they call a snubber, a snubber valve, S-N-U-B-B-E-R, a snubber valve. And that prevents heavy pulses of pressure going through there and damaging that diaphragm. Because that grey bit you can see there in the centre of the picture is the actual underneath of the rubber diaphragm. So that's quite a large hole. 
uh, that probably won't get blocked, but I have seen smaller ones that can block up because this isn't a through, the water doesn't flow through there, it just flows in and out. So it can get deposits in there and it can block that hole. And if you've got a pump that's operating erratically, sometimes you take this off, undo these screws here, that allows you to free this piece here up and then you just poke that through with a piece of wire or something and it'll probably be good for months and months and months. Um, I've done that with a few of these, not this one obviously because this one's more or less brand new and um, that's always a good, good way to fix these pressure switches. So if the pump's behaving erratically, like it's not turning on or off when you expect it to, try adjusting the switch inside obviously and if that doesn't work then have a look at, take it off and have a look at that, um, that pinhole there because um, that may or may not be the problem. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out. Make sure to click like and subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell too. Well, I reckon that's it for today, so bye for now.